Hello everyone and in this video I'm going to be going over four digital tools that I use to grow my YouTube automation channels. But before we begin I do want to invite you to watch my free masterclass training where I go over my 10 ways to go viral on YouTube and start earning passive income. So that link is down below in the description but let's get started. So tool number one is a tool that's called Jasper AI. So Jasper is an AI writing tool and I don't use this to write scripts just because I do think script writers are a lot better than writing scripts than this tool. However, Jasper is also very useful when it comes to video descriptions, coming up with video topic ideas, coming up with script outlines, and also coming up with video titles. So let me show you how it works. So let's pretend that for this video, it's gonna be four digital marketing tools that you need. Now you can set the tone of voice, set the keyword that you wanna rank for. So let's say digital marketing tools, and you can click this generate button that you see here, and then it'll output like three different types of descriptions. So what I usually do is I use a combination of all three and you can just copy and paste it into your YouTube video. So that's one way that I use Jasper when I need on-demand descriptions, such as for my personal videos. But I imagine that if you're like paying a dollar per description, you can figure out a way to have your team use Jasper to write descriptions for themselves. But also, like I've said, Jasper is capable of writing a lot more than just videos. You can see all the templates that they have here in which Jasper is kind of catered to write for. So super cool tool. But overall, I mainly use it for descriptions and coming up with video topic ideas and titles. Now, now, the second digital tool that I want to introduce to you guys is TubeBuddy. So if you've watched a lot of my other videos, you'll know that TubeBuddy is my favorite tool when it comes to YouTube. So with TubeBuddy here, you can see that there's a lot of ways you can use TubeBuddy. You can use it to track keywords that you want to rank for. You can use it to split A-B test thumbnails. So that's something important that I do for my channels. You can use it to keep track of your competitors. So I'm logged into one of my legend plans of TubeBuddy. And in here, you can add competitor channels that are similar to your niche. And you can see what they're posting because maybe perhaps you want to post similar videos that they're posting and this is one of my ways to research topic ideas in which I'll scroll down all the way down and I'll check the most recent uploads and what I'm looking for here are basically videos that are performing exceptionally well so here we have a video that got 8,000 views maybe I want to make a video related to how to create YouTube videos using two free AI tools so TubeBuddy I do recommend TubeBuddy it's a great tool to help you grow your channels especially because of the competitor scorecard that you see here and also because of the a b split test thumbnail so you can input two thumbnails and every midnight TubeBuddy will actually alternate between the thumbnails and depending on which thumbnail performs the best, it'll automatically implement that thumbnail within your YouTube video and permanently have that uploaded as the thumbnail of choice based on data and statistics. So moving on to the third tool I wanna to introduce to you is vidIQ. So a lot of people prefer vidIQ over TubeBuddy, but I do prefer TubeBuddy over vidIQ. But one of the ways I use vidIQ is through its paid version. And this is probably the only reason why I use vidIQ. So on YouTube, when you have the vidIQ Chrome extension installed, you see this blue number here next to these videos that tells you how many subscribers the channel has. That's probably the main way that I use TubeBuddy for. It's to see how many subscribers that channel has. So based on that, I'm able to actually see, you know, if this channel has 77,000 subscribers, but this video has 1 million views, I want to analyze the channel. I want to see what they're doing. I want to see what's working for them. So here's another channel, NBA Zone, 200K subs, but 450,000 subscribers. With that, that, you kind of get this idea like okay this channel is doing something right because even if all of NBA Zone subscribers watch this video they should only have like 200,000 subscribers right but this kind of proves to you that this video it is 100% in the algorithm after this video I'm probably gonna put a video titled 10 things you didn't know about Bryce James into production for my own channels so here's another example although it's a this looks like it's a long-form content video 150k subs, 300,000 views, 37,000 subs, 34k views. So you kind of want to see what videos are getting views more than the channel has subscribers. So that's the main reason why I use vidIQ. Moving on to the fourth tool, it's the tool called Feedly. So with Feedly, I use it to curate news so that I don't always have to check on uh, Google News or the YouTube search bar. What I'll do here, based on the channel that I'm running, I'll curate articles slash news slash blogs to that specific channel and then Feedly will organize it based on what's trending or not. So here for one of my channels called The Sholi, you can see that I have a bunch of websites. Their RSS feeds are feeding Feedly what news articles are trending or not. So maybe I want to make an article 
related to Henry Cavill leaving The Witcher and Gerald has already been recast for season four. So maybe I wanna make that a video topic idea. So I have it organized based on channel name, as you can see here. But even so, Feedly is a great way, especially if you're running multiple channels, for you to curate RSS slash news feeds and kind of have it in a single place where you can just skim through the articles and see what articles are good to create videos on. So Feedly, I think this is a paid version. This is a disclaimer. So be mindful of that. And lastly, as a bonus tool that I want to introduce to everyone, it's without a doubt Photoshop. So Photoshop is my preferred method of creating thumbnails, but I know that there is a free tool called Canva, which you could also use. But with Photoshop, I've created a ton of thumbnails. I even have a dedicated course tied to teaching people how to use Photoshop to create better thumbnails. Because as an individual who does YouTube automation, I do think that the three skills that every YouTube automation person should know is knowing how to research topics, knowing how to title your videos, and then knowing how to create thumbnails on demand because those three I think are the most essential parts when it comes to running a successful YouTube automation channel. After this video, I do wanna invite you to check out my new channel where I'm documenting my journey to go from $0 to $100,000 per month with brand new slash dead YouTube automation channels. And that'll be on a completely brand new channel called Started With YouTube Automation. Check it down below in the description.